10 drug barons currently rotting in jail and the reasons why. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Joaquin El Chapo Guzman is Mexico's most notorious drug lord who used to lead the famous Sinaloa cartel. The Sinaloa cartel is considered to be one of the most powerful international drug trafficking organizations in the world, possibly even more powerful than Colombia's infamous Medellin cartel during the 80s and 90s. Guzman managed various operations, including the production, trafficking, and distribution of massive quantities of illicit substances throughout two of the world's biggest consumers, Europe and the United States. He did so by establishing long-distance tunnels near borders and distribution cells, allowing him to smuggle more drugs to the U.S. than any other crime boss in history. Guzman's leadership also garnered him so much wealth and influence that Forbes named him one of the world's most powerful people between 2009 and 2013. He was initially arrested in Guatemala in 93 and transferred to Mexico, where he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. But in 2001, he managed to escape from a maximum security prison by coming up with an escape plan that cost him two and a half million dollars and involved bribing prison guards, prison employees, and local police. He managed to stay in hiding for so long that he was only captured in 2014. That didn't last long, however, as he escaped before his formal sentencing through a tunnel dug by his associates. However, after a shootout in 2016, he was recaptured by Mexican authorities and extradited to the U.S. So in 2019, he was sentenced to life in prison and an additional 30 years. <laughs> wow, sir. I'm gobsmacked. Demetrius Big Meech Flannery. Quick heads up before we look at Big Meech here. New limited edition Boggled Birch just dropped on the store, so don't forget to get yours using the link that just popped up up above, the merch shelf just down below this video, or the link in the description area once you finish watching the video. It'll only take you a few seconds. Demetrius Big Meech Flannery is a notorious American drug lord who's famous for founding the Black Mafia family gang alongside his brother. Through direct links to Mexican drug cartels, they established coke distribution sales throughout the United States by the year 2000. In the early 2000s, the Black Mafia family also launched BMF Entertainment as a front organization to launder money. The company acted as promoter for a couple of well-known hip-hop artists, including Young Jeezy, as well as a record label for Blue Da Vinci. The Black Mafia family members were indicted in 2005 by the DEA, and both brothers received a 30-year sentence for running a drug trafficking ring. His brother, however, was granted a compassionate release in 2020 due to health issues as part of an attempt to restrict the spread of the pandemic within prisons. Demetrius also requested to be released, but was denied because the judge stated that authorizing his release would be hasty, as his prison record indicates that he hasn't changed. However, his sentence was reduced by three years, and he will likely be released in 2028. Gilberto and Miguel Rodriguez Orwea Brothers Gilberto and Miguel Rodriguez Orwea are Colombian drug lords who are known for leading the Cali cartel, which they formed in the 1970s, along with Jose Santa Cruz Londoño. There was a time when they supplied 90% of the European coke market and 80% of the US market. The Cali cartel was considered to be less violent than rivaling Medellin cartel. Now, this helped them grow while the Medellin cartel was engaged in a violent campaign against the Colombian government. It was only after the death of Pablo Escobar that the police focused their attention on the Cali cartel, and their battle against the cartel began in 95. During the same year, Gilberto was arrested first and sentenced to 15 years behind bars. Thanks to a controversial judicial order, he was freed temporarily in 2002, but recaptured in 2003, and in 2006, they were both sentenced to 30 years in prison, so they won't be out anytime soon. Servando Gomez Martinez Servando Gomez Martinez is a Mexican drug kingpin who's also known as La Tuta, the teacher. Since he used to be a primary school teacher, unlike the drug lord at the end of this video, who is also dubbed El Padrino, the godfather. He's the former head of the Knights Templar Cartel, a Michoacan-based criminal organization. He's also one of the founding members of the drug cartel La Familia Michoacana, which was a breakaway group of the Knights Templar. Although the Knights Templar Cartel was one of the most bloodthirsty drug trafficking groups in the country, the group had to follow La Tuta's strict ethical code. All members had to respect women and children, help the poor, and they weren't allowed to use drugs or kill for money. In 2015, La Tuta was officially charged with drug trafficking offenses, kidnapping, and organized crime. Now, at the time, La Tuta was locked up in the same maximum security prison as El Chapo. And what many may not know is that during El Chapo's escape in 2015, La Tuta helped him escape by staging a heart attack. In 2019, however, he was sentenced to 55 years in prison. Vincente Carrillo Fuentes Vincente Carrillo Fuentes, also known as El Viceroy, is the former head of the Juarez Cartel and one of the most wanted drug lords in Mexico. His brother, Amado Carrillo Fuentes, founded the cartel and then brought in his siblings and later his son, Vincente Carrillo Leva, 
After Amado's passing in 97, Fuentes stepped up as the leader of the cartel. Between 90 and 2014, he was reportedly responsible for trafficking narcotics into the US, as well as ordering hitmen to carry out hundreds of killings, torture sessions, kidnappings, and other such violent acts. In 2014, he was arrested by authorities in Mexico and is currently still locked up in a maximum security prison there. However, according to the latest updates, prosecutors are seeking his extradition to the US and he's also been hit with even more charges since he was first incarcerated. Let's just say things are not looking good for him. Osil Cardenas Gillen Osil Cardenas Gillen is a Mexican drug kingpin and former head of the famous Los Zetas and the Gulf Cartel. The Gulf Cartel controlled a substantial percentage of Mexico's drug trade and the Los Zetas served as the group's hired private mercenary army. After gaining control of the Gulf Cartel in 1997, Cardenas found himself in a turf war. So, after seeking out a retired army lieutenant, Arturo de Sina, he recruited 30 former Mexico Special Force soldiers and created his own army. In 2030, Cardenas was seized in a shootout between the Gulf Cartel gunmen and the Mexican military. By the time of his arrest, he was one of the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives and even $2 million was offered for his capture. He was extradited to the US in 2007 and sentenced to 25 years in prison in 2010 on various charges, including homicide, drug trafficking, and money laundering. He's set to be released in 2024. Marcola Marcola, real name Marcos Willens Herbes Camacho, is a Brazilian drug lord and criminal. According to reports, he is the current leader of the largest Brazilian criminal organization and prison gang called Primero Comando de Capital PCC. He is considered to be one of Brazil's and Latin America's most notorious drug traffickers. Over the years, Marcola has proven time and time again that he is not to be messed with. When he became the leader of the PCC, he placed a death bounty on previous leaders, and under his leadership, members must pay an income each month and follow a strict code of discipline. And although he's currently serving a sentence of more than 200 years behind bars, it doesn't mean he's staying out of trouble. No. In fact, he was the mastermind behind 29 prison riots in 2001, as well as the murder of a judge who had tried to stop PCC's operations. In 2006, after finding out about plans to move him and other prisoners to a maximum security prison, he organized attacks on Brazilian police and a violent outbreak in Sao Paulo, which resulted in the demise of more than 150 people. After that, he was moved to a maximum security prison anyway, but he's currently serving his life sentence in the Brasilia Federal Penitentiary, which is known for housing the most dangerous inmates. Jean-Li Yigon Zhen Li Yigan is a Chinese Mexican businessman and is the legal representative and owner of Unimed Farm Chem Mexico, among many other corporations. He is currently suspected of smuggling pseudoephedrine and ephedrine products into Mexico. At the time, these products were widely used in cold medications like Sudafed, but they may also be utilized in methamphetamine manufacture. Although Unimed was legally permitted to import these products for a period of time, suspicions started arising that Yigong continued importing the chemicals after the license ended in 2005. In 2007, Zhenli Yigon was charged with conspiring to aid and abet the manufacture of methamphetamine with the knowledge or intent of importing it to the United States. He's also been accused of being part of the Sinaloa cartel, which he has denied. Now, here's where it gets complicated. All allegations made by the U.S. government against Yigan were dismissed with prejudice in 2009. However, separate outstanding criminal charges against Yigan in Mexico were not dropped. So after opposing extradition to Mexico for nine years while imprisoned in the U.S., Yigan was extradited to Mexico in 2016 to face other criminal charges. He has maintained his innocence throughout. However, during a search, $205 million made up in stacks of $100 bills weighing about two tons and guns were found hidden in his home. This probably doesn't make him look very innocent, but I'm sure he can explain that. Christopher Koch Christopher Koch, commonly referred to as Dudas, is a Jamaican drug baron. He's the head of the violent Jamaican drug gang founded by his father called the Shower Posse. Growing up, Christopher and his siblings were surrounded by wealth thanks to his father's profits. Unfortunately, drug-related violence claimed the lives of both his sister and brother. Coke was gradually integrated into the business, and following his father's passing in 92, 23-year-old Coke became the gang's leader, as well as the leader of West Kingston's Tivoli Gardens community in Jamaica. As he was involved in many community programs to help people in need, he had so much support from locals that Jamaican police were unable to set foot in the area without the consent of the community. But in 2010, he was arrested and extradited to the U.S., and he received a sentence of 23 years behind bars there. Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, otherwise known as El Padrino, the Godfather, and El Jefe de Jefes, the boss of bosses, is one of the most powerful and rarely discussed drug variants of all time. 
Gallardo came from next to nothing and climbed the ranks to become the leader of the Guadalajara cartel, becoming one of the most influential drug traffickers in Mexican history and controlling nearly all of Mexico's drug operations. He was convicted in 1989 for the murder of a DEA agent and was sentenced to 37 years in prison. He was initially serving time at a maximum security prison, but he was transferred to the Guadalajara medium security prison in 2014 because of his declining health. Even though he requested house arrest, that request was denied in 2019. Click on the playlist to the left to binge watch more celebrities, athletes, and famous people currently rotting in jail. And the reasons why. We'll see you there.